Hello everyone, this is the Films and Menace Entertainment with another movie review, this time on the second installment of the Toy Story series, not the first. This may seem odd considering that I am reviewing the second installment and not the first, but admittedly this is this is actually the first movie of the Toy Story series that I actually saw when I was a kid. It followed after A Bug's Life, released the year I was born. I think you know what year that is. But anyway, before I go into Toy Story 2, I could give you a little bit about what Toy Story 1 is actually about. Before I go into that, too, I'll tell you about the history of Pixar a little bit and some of the shorts. You see, Pixar is an animation company, and before they were ever Pixar, they started off as Lucasfilm. Where they were part of Lucasfilm, where they worked with Lucasfilm, made some animated shorts, and then they started to make bigger films. Back to the Toy Story series. In the first Toy Story, it actually started off with the song, You Got a Friend in Me. I find that song very dearest to my heart because it signifies the whole of the Toy Story series. And basically, that's what the whole series is about. You got a friend in me. Exactly, right? <laughs> now, in the first Toy Story, Tom Hanks and Tim Allen casted as Woody and Buzz, the main toy leads of the movie, are pitted against each other. And they're both toys of this kid named Andy. And the main toy, Woody, is jealous of Buzz because Buzz is the newer toy. This is just the main Toy Story, by the way. And Andy keeps playing with Buzz. And Woody tries to um, become the attention hogger of Andy. But then chaos ensues. And they must find a way to get back home. And that's the gist of the first Toy Story. Now I will get into Toy Story 2. In Toy Story 2... I'll go into almost the whole the whole movie first. It starts off with Woody getting ready for cowboy camp and his um his friends are helping him find his hat. I find it seems pretty silly because it's just silly you know, how it plays out. But anyway their new dog actually it's Andy's new dog busts down the door. Now I'm I'm saying that Figuratively, he doesn't really do that. He just comes into the door and ran, rampages all over the room. And the reason I say that is because there, it's a reference to the last movie's uh, Scud the Dog. And that's a that's just the, from the previous movie. But back to the second movie. Buster starts running around and, and plays with Woody. Play! Okay, that's just, a, that's just an inside joke, the play part. You won't get that. But anyway... In the Toy Story universe, animals don't even care about how toys are alive because they don't seem to uh, have that much uh, memory. Not, no, that's not... Okay, in the Toy Story universe, animals are not aware of how things are alive or not. So they're not really aware of how a toy isn't supposed to be alive. So the toys don't really give a darn about that. But to a human, that might freak them out. So here, Buster is not freaked out. So the am so the toys can do whatever they want. This was um okay, not mean to keep comparing the first film with the uh second one, but there are similarities because of the um because the relative <laughs> obviously they're the ones the sequels to the other. But um in the first Toy Story, there was a scene where Sid, the antagonist, was revolted against by his own toys. Crazy. It's like a it's like a scene from a it's like it's sort of like it made me nervous when I was young. I'll tell you why later. But that scene made me think of something like from a Twilight Zone episode. Anyway, back to the second movie again. Jeez, I keep going off topic about the first movie. Anyway, with uh the second movie again Okay, let's just skip the chase. Andy plays with Woody, and somehow his arm gets ripped. And they synthesize that his he's getting older by age. And this is where things got pretty dark, because 
in one scene, he has a very terrifying freaking nightmare. Why say this? Why say freaking? Because the scene is very terrifying from my kid point of view. It disturbed me so much that I almost had nightmares when I was older. I still obsess over the scene, but it was very, very nightmares in my opinion. And I wasn't, of course, alone, but it was still terrifying to me. Imagine, like... You first watch the scene, you see Woody, you don't understand his perspective, you see all these arms inside a trash can, thinking, oh, these arms can be useful. When all of a sudden Woody freaks out, there's scary music, he tries to escape the trash can, and all of a sudden these arms just come out like a demonic monster. Like, what the heck is going on here? Obviously, Woody is terrified. It's his nightmare. And, of course, luckily, it's just a nightmare. Which means that, um... He was never put in the trash can in the first place. But still, the scene is traumatizing to me. And that's why every time we go back to the first Toy Story, again with the first Toy Story, that some most of those scenes that featured the mutant toys, if you didn't know about those, you can learn about those by yourself, that it reminds me of this whole nightmare scene, which is probably the scariest scene throughout the, the movie in general. There are other scary moments throughout the whole series, but... Um, I consider this scene from the second movie to be the most nightmarish just because it's a nightmare scene. Other movies that have nightmares sort of give me the same vibe, but not as much as the Toy Story 2 nightmare scene. But enough about the nightmare scene. I wish I could stop talking about it. It's so traumatizing to me. I almost pretend to have the nightmare, strangely enough. But it, ironically, later on, I did have nightmares about it. Even worse. I had a dream that I was witnessing Woody's nightmare, but even some of his arms were in the trash can grabbing onto him. Okay, enough of that. Anyway, there are no characters. There's, um... There's Jesse, Bullseye, and the surprise, fatherly yet antagonistic, Al. Actually, no, not really Al. He's just the owner of the toys. I don't wish to share... Who the real antagonist is because my spoiler for you guys, but okay, I'll share it. It's um, uh, Stinky Pete, yeah, Stinky Pete. He's voiced by Kelsey Grammer, just like um, Sideshow Bob, similar to Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons, believe it or not. But yeah, same guy, but he wants Woody to be in this museum in Tokyo because. That's how they'll um, uh, keep Jesse out of claustrophobia. They've been in that box for so many years, according to uh, Stinky Pete. And yeah, I think that's that's uh, pretty sad, honestly. Because you know, what makes it sadness even worse is that Jesse has a flashback about her previous owner. And this, strangely, this previous owner is rumored to be Andy's mom. So maybe she isn't like... It's completely separated from her owner, you know? But if I were to say anything else about this movie, I couldn't mention the outtakes. They're pretty funny. Some of my favorites are actually, uh, well, I can't remember them, but if you take a look at the outtakes, you can definitely see some funny moments in those outtakes. Obviously, they're not real outtakes, but if you take a look at them, they're really, really funny, and they distract from the nightmare scene from earlier. This gag, the idea of the outtakes, was a similar idea put in A Bug's Life and Monsters, Inc. It didn't last very long because of animation and budget cuts, to my assumption at least. That's what people have been saying at least too. Anyway, sorry for all the rambling about the nightmare scene because it really traumatized me when I was a kid. But anyway, it's really highly recommended for anyone who wants to watch Toy Story. But first watch Toy Story 1. And if you really want to watch Toy Story 2, just be aware of the nightmare scene. But I'm sure it's not all that bad because I'm sure even that scene's nostalgic, just like the rest of the movies. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. I, there's one thing I forgot to mention was that one of the outtakes, one of the original outtakes from the previous releases was removed because of a controversy involving John Lasseter, one of the directors for for Pixar who worked on this movie, was accused of sexual misconduct. 
And so because of this, one of these outtakes featuring Singy Pete with two Barbie dolls was removed mainly because he talked to them in a very flirtatious manner similar to John Lasseter. But all I can say is that it didn't age that well. In future releases, it was removed. That's all I have to say about that.